This is a demonstration of using Maricopa County's DDMSW program in the simplest possible way to calculate the Clark and Green and Amped parameters for a watershed, which DDMSW does using the HEC1 model, but which you can use outside DDMSW in HEC-HMS once you get the parameters using DDMSW. Before you start, you should understand these notes about file management and crashes. You can read these notes and others about this approach in this blog post by searching Tom Haw's DDMSW HEC1 Quick Start. Well, let's start. Download, install, and start DDMSW, and then go to File, Select Project, and click Add. A hydrology and hydraulics project, just accepting the standard. And then type in a name for the project, YouTube Heck one simple. Once you enter the project name, you have a choice to make about rainfall. If you use NOAA 2, which is obsolete, or NOAA 14, which is in 2019, the current rainfall atlas, you will get rainfall for your project by looking up your project location on a series of maps that are included in DDMSW that look like this. If your project is outside Maricopa County, you'll need to select Custom and enter the precipitation values from the NOAA website, which is called the Precipitation Data Frequency Server, into DDMSW for your project. For this demonstration, we'll use NOAA Atlas 14. Then we will click Save and OK, and it tells us it's setting up the project with the defaults we chose. The blog post says we now go to the Hydrology Rainfall menu, where we can either look at the maps and enter our grid cells, or if we've chosen custom, we can enter the precipitation values. Let's look at the maps by clicking the Maps button. DDMSW opens up the Rainfall Maps Index in my PDF viewer, and on the first page we have an index to each of the maps. And we can see it extends quite a bit beyond the Maricopa County boundary. Let's pretend we know what we're doing and we're working on a project that's located in Township 1 North, Range 7 East in East Mesa. And let's say that I've identified that the project is right there above the 7 in the Range 07 East. I zoom out a little bit and find out that it's on map 54. And I go to map 54 and I try to find that location in range 7 east. So here I am arriving at map 54. And here's range 7 east and my location of interest is approximately grid cell 86. For the sake of discussion, let's say it was 45 to 47, 85 to 87, and 125 to 127. We go back to DDMSW and we say 45 to 47 on, this was um, index 52 or 54. Yeah, okay. Let's say 54. Forty-five to forty-seven. Don't worry if I got these wrong. And then say save, add, 
Another one in 54 is going to be 85 to 87. And save, add, and do our next row, 125 to 127. Save and update. It brings in all those grid cells and averages their rainfall data and gives me the precipitation values. And that's how I get rainfall. Now the blog post says that after rainfall we need to create a subbasin, then assign land use and soils to it, then update the subbasin. So we'll be visiting the subbasin area twice. We use the hydrology subbasins menu. Pick our major basin. It's 01. That's a default of DDMSW. And click add to put in our first subbasin. We'll call it 1. And I'll give it a 1 square mile area. A 1.5 mile length. 1100 feet upstream elevation, 1000 foot downstream elevation. Don't enter slope per mile. It's a natural watershed and we don't use any custom values. And I save. And I say we can't update yet because we don't have anything. So I just click OK. Then we go to the hydrology land use or soils. Let's go to soil. Uh, we're working our way up, so I'll go to land use. Now, when we're in land use, I can either just select, let's click add. We're going to add a land use assignment, and we'll choose subbasin 1. We're going to assign a land use to subbasin 1, and we're going to assign it for the entire area because that's the simplest possible usage here at the moment. And we're going to pick a land use. If we wanted to make our own, we would go to land use uh, defaults, I'll show you. But this, for now, we'll just save, and then we'll say OK. We've got a land use, and the area of all your land uses for our subbasin has to add up to the subbasin's area. All right. If we wanted to create our own land use, we would have added under defaults and put in our own green and amp parameters for it. But we didn't do that. We just did the very simplest. We used a, a Maricopa County uh, provided value. Then we'll go and do the same thing for soils. It's the same drill. We add a, an assignment to subbasin 1, and the assignment we're going to make is one of these soils that we have to find on a map or using the USD Web Soil Survey site, and it covers one square mile of our subbasin. Once again, we save and click OK, and those areas need to add up to the entire area of the subbasin. All the assignments need to add up to the entire area. All right, let's go to the blog post, and it tells us once we have finished with soils, we now need to update our subbasin. So let's go to hydrology, subbasins, and click update. It tells us that the time of concentration is a bit long. I'll ignore that this time. We say we can observe here that we have the coveted time of concentration in our valid values, storage coefficient, 
This was the whole purpose why we might have cracked open DDMSW if we were going to use HEC-HMS for our modeling. We needed to get the TC and R values according to the Maricopa County method, but that would have required us to have the to calculate the average rainfall intensity. And DDMSW does that by way of the MCUHP1 program, which we can also download and run instead of DDMSW. But DDMSW is worth using in case we have multiple subbasins with multiple intersection intersecting soil and land use maps. So let's go and run HEC1 so we can learn how to use DDMSW. And the first thing we do is we go to network. We've got to create a network. In this case, all we need to add is a subbasin. And of course, it's subbasin one. We say save. And then, once we've created the network, we create a draft HEC1 input file. And it shows that to us. We say OK. And then we go to HEC1 model. And it wants us, if we had read the, that previous message, it wants us to uncheck update HEC1, save that, and run the model once with dummy values. Okay. And it, it just wants to see if, it, if it's able to run a model successfully, which it was. So then it tells us to check update HEC1, save it, and run the model again with real values, and it also runs successfully, and we can get our final results, 928 CFS. And we would have got lots of return values if we had checked it. Let's try that. Let's just check them all, save, run the model again. Are you going to run six models? Okay. And, uh, we just did, and now our results are shown there. We can also look at the HEC1 output file, and there are now six of them, one for each frequency. I can pick any one of them and look at the output file, which gives the peak flow as 928 CFS, which is the same value I could have seen by clicking on results. And I believe that is the end. Let's go to the blog post. And that is it. That's the simplest way to use Maricopa County's DDMSW to calculate the Clark and Green and Amped parameters and even the flow for a sub-basin.